Okay, is this on? Is this on? I, I hope this is on. <laughs> I really, really hope this is on. Hi, I'm Jonas and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be doing a brief analysis on the brand new Pokemon Scarlet and Violet trailer that just came out. Literally, you can tell by the three views, it just came out at the time of me recording this. And I don't have a script for this. I, I, I usually don't do these kind of content because it's simply because it's really hard to improvise something to talk about a lot of the time. And originally this video was just going to be a YouTube short, like the ones that I did previously with the, the Wiglet reveal that they did a while, like a few weeks ago, maybe a few days ago. I don't know how long it was, but because this thing, I was not expecting this. This was a 14 minute fucking video. They advertised it as it was a, a trailer, you know, but it's not. This is pretty much just an analysis video and Obviously, 14 minutes cannot be crammed into a one minute short, so I decided to just, you know what, just wing it, briefly just go over some things I want to talk about. I don't want to like take like 10 minutes or so just to talk about something. I'll briefly talk about it in each section as I go along. I already watched it, so it's not going to be a reaction or anything. It's just going to be me going over this stuff. Again, this is not scripted. This is all live <laughs> on, on recording, so if I end up stuttering like you've just heard, I apologize in advance, but before we begin. If you could do me a favor by leaving a like on the video, subscribing to the channel, it would really help me out a lot. You don't have to, but it's free. It's always there and you can change your mind if you want. Don't worry, I won't hold it against you or anything like that. So without further ado, we'll see how things go. We'll see how things go. I'll mute the audio right here. So right off the bat, uh, they already showed us some new scenes that we have not seen before and I really really like the graphics I don't think the graphics have actually changed that much since we last saw it uh, in terms of like an actual trailer not the The mini trailer for Wiglet. I think the last major trailer we got for this game was I think in August I could be wrong I'll, I'll post like text on the screen if I'm like wrong or something like that But yeah, that was the last time we actually had something like that I don't know, you know, the graphics haven't really changed that much Not that it was bad before I think I still think it looks good There were a few animation issues that I did notice while watching this trailer And I will get to those in a bit But those happened like later on in the trailer Not like early on from what I can tell So I'm, I am gonna, oh well, so I, mean, I am gonna skip like a few of this stuff and we'll just like get to the parts that I really think are interesting. So starting with this, we already have a good look of the UI battle from before, but here we can actually see it uh, play in motion. I think before it was just like screenshots, but now it's like we can actually see it in motion and it looks good. You know, a, a little bit like crammed in the corner. I really like how it feels a lot more organized than before. Like usually before in like past Pokemon games, there's like some kind of graphic for like the health bar and stuff like that. You, you could, I'll pull up a, a few screenshots of it. But you, you can tell like it was a little bit more flashy before. Here it's just like it's more simplified and the enemy's health bar and level is not like on the top uh, top right of the screen like before. Now it's just hovering over them which I think is really good. In terms of like where the, the abilities and moves are I think it looks really really good. It looks again very organized. A little simple but you know it works for what it is. I'm, I'm not complaining about it, anything like that. I'm not asking for like anything too flashy. I think it looks fine. Same thing with the terrestrialized logo. I think that icon looks gorgeous and if i play it you can tell like it's actually like floating crystals on on there like here let me let me replay that shit again you can tell that there was uh you know some crystals like floating over it you know like you can see right there i think it looks really really good like quality wise it looks really good you can already tell from like just from this video like <laughs> i'm just rambling shit and, this, and that's what happens when i don't have a fucking script to go off of this one here ooh, this one is interesting so you can find uh wild Pokemon that are sparkling like Jigglypuff over here and I thought that was really cool turns out these things can terrestrialize into any type when you start the battle and the more damage you do to it the more you can actually break down its defense and it will turn back into a normal Pokemon they even mention it here yeah here we go here we go so you can tell like after Quaxley uses wing attack yeah he, he uses wing attack on this Jigglypuff it does a fuck ton of damage nearly killing it and the terrestrialized form breaks and it just goes back to being a normal type. I really want to see like what other Pokemon they actually have that can do this as well and see like how interesting it'll be because with Jigglypuff I feel like it's just bland. It's kind of like an example of it but I think if other Pokemon you find in the wild does this I think it'll be more interesting that way. And then we have a look of the UI for the status summary uh, that we all know and love. But this one is a lot more again a lot of the UI in interfaces in this game is like really fresh it feels organized i wasn't really a huge fan of sword and shield ui interface i thought it was all right but it just wasn't like i don't know just something about it didn't really feel stand out to me 
This one I think is a, lo a lot better than Sword and Shield's UI, but not as good as like Sun and Moon's and X and Y's. In terms of like on a scale of like 1 to 10 for like how good the UI is, especially for this one right here, I think th the status summary is like a, it's like a hard 8. It's not 10 out of 10, but I think it works really fine. And what's interesting is the borders on like the top and the bottom. You can tell like it's purple. I think that will change colors to orange or purple depending on what version you play, including like the little patterns on the top. You can tell like there's like grape patterns on the on the top and that's supposed to like indicate like violet's version's uh school logo or icon whatever it is i think that's really good so like maybe with pokemon scarlet it'll be orange and then it'll have like the different plants for the uh the pattern i think that's really really good and also they even display like the terra type for each pokemon so for this jigglypuff specifically it's water but it's terra type and then you know it's standard normal fairy i think that's really good very useful information in case like players want to do like nuzlocks or if they just want to do like a standard playthrough of Scarlet and Violet, I think that'll be really helpful to know like which Pokemon is like overlapping in terms of types and stuff like that. That being said, I feel like if someone were to do a challenge of like going through the entire game without using a Terra type, it'll probably be more difficult but also really challenging and I would love to try that at some point. Okay, this one, they've already mentioned this on the website a few months ago. You can now summon Pokemon to just go and do their thing, their own thing, without having to go into like a full bone battle with them. I, th I think it's really, really cute. It could probably also lead to like a lot of funny situations too, where if like, if you're doing a Nuzlocke and your Pokemon goes out and accidentally fights some strong Pokemon that's like gonna kill it in like one or two hits, I think that'll be like a funny situation. But aside from that, you know, I think it looks really good. It definitely saves a lot of backtracking like so much backtracking and also saves a lot of time for you to just mind your own business while your Pokemon basically just grinds items in exp for your whole party i think that's really useful in a lot of situations like that now the ui for the map this looks really good so far all the ui interfaces is really fucking good y button i'm assuming the y button is basically to go to a different section or change the map view to like a like a more zoomed out image of paldea or like a zoomed in image i'm assuming x button i think the x button just like leads to like the tra i'm assuming that's the trainer card that's the pokedex because like the pokedex i think this time around is like bookshelves with like books of each pokemon Rather than just being like a full-blown device. So I think that's just for the Pokedex. And then I think the blue is just for the map. Again, really good. You have a good indication of the weather. So there is a weather cycle here. That is good. Just like Sword and Shield. I love how like the, the magnifying glass is actually a Rotom. Very reminiscent of the Rotom decks in Sun and Moon. With like the color schemes and like the eyes. It, very reminiscent of that. I do miss the Rotom decks. But you know, this one works too. More information on Team Star, right? I think it's Team Star. I'm not fully acquainted on this new team yet. This storyline looks really cool. Like the Star... Starfall straight, you know, really cool. It reminds me of like a dungeon in an MMO, like FF14, World of Warcraft or shit like that, where you're just basically going through this one linear section and you have like wild Pokemon that are in the way and you just send out your own like this without having to go into like full blown battles and just beat them one like simultaneously. I think that's really interesting. And you even have like a time limit as well as like a set amount of Pokemon you need, you need to beat in order to clear. I think that's really, really cute and really cool. Definitely gives me like MMO dungeon vibes. I did watch the trailer. They still don't tell you if the truck that she's riding on is a Pokemon or is that just like a sentient car with like a fucking tongue and eyes and shit. Mel looks fine. You know, it's a little bit too much. A little more on the emo side. Maybe that's what they were going for. You know, I think she looks decent. That's just me. Okay. I know there's some people out there who actually love this character's design. I think it looks a, a little bit overkill, but it works for what it is, especially since like this whole theme of team stars like they're delinquent kids and shit you know trying to like be rebels and all that so you know it works for the theme and what they're trying to go for not really a fan of the design i think it's fine it's not the worst thing i've seen but it's just not my favorite this one i think it's really interesting the, how tms are being used in scarlet and violet what game freak's trying to go for this time is that at the tms or technical machines you can now craft them just by winning or catching wild pokemon or beating enemy pokemon i think that's what they said i could be wrong from enemy pokemon you can get like items that you can use to craft tms which i think is really interesting on how it's being used so instead of just going to a pokemon and buying it for a shit ton of money you, you just craft them which i think is really cool and even shows like you know which pokemon can learn what moves that's really good uh ui of course is also clean okay yeah that's the types for each of the each of the moves so you know fire water electric grass ice fighting poison i'm assuming this one right here is ground either that's ground dark 
or normal type. I could be wrong. Actually, I think this one right here with the ring, I think that's normal type. This one is just probably like dark ground type or something. I could be wrong. But that's really cool how they like sort out which TMs are for which type. I think that's really useful rather than just being cluttered or being like described by like a TM number, which they still do here. But I think like having it in like each category is very organized. I love that. I really, really do. This route is for... I think discovering like legendary Pokemon, not like Koridon and Mirai down levels of legendary, but just like interesting Pokemon with Arvin, right? This is like one of the three routes. Very big health bar. It's speed fell. Okay, so she's going for a Terrestrialize. After beating it, he runs off. That's cool. And then we have a look, a first look of the online system. So there's like Link Trade Surprise, Link Battle, uh, Battle Stadium, and Mystery Griff. I kind of do like this, you know, but it also feels like there's all the space. All the space that they, that they could have used. They chose to put all of it here. I do like the little pictures that they show when you like hover over like each of the options. I really like that. But also there's like so much space here you could put, but you just put the, the, fuck, the fucking trainer and the badge depending on what version you play. That's all there is to the side. This one right here. So th I think this is a new... I didn't go to the website and check, but this thing is a new regional form for uh, Giraffe Rank. Either this is a new evolution altogether, or this is a, just a regional form. This I'm assuming this is a regional form. This little ball thing here on the t on the end of a uh, Giraffe Rank, that's now on top of its head. Basically like as a hoodie. I think that's kind of cool. I'm hoping it's not sentient because he could just literally close the thing and suffocate the Pokemon to death. But I'm assuming that this thing is just serves as a hood. And interesting about the Pokedex here is that it feels like you're looking at a magazine on like a rack. Each magazine is like an issue of like a magazine. I think that's really, really cute with how they went with that design. Each Pokemon has like its own image to show like them, you know, chilling out in a, in a habitat or in a location and stuff like that. I think that's really cool in terms of like style. And this is, this is the standard like Pokemon tradition. Get a gym badges and become the champion, right? The Sunflora hide and seek. This objective for the gym, I think it's fine. A little too basic, a little too child childish for me, but then again, you know, there's gonna be kids playing this, so I guess it's fine. This right here, holy fucking shit, I don't know what the hell happened. The model of the Sunflora looks great. The running animation looks great, but that's not the issue. The issue is that these things look like they are running at fucking 12 frames per second. Look at this shit, look at this shit. That is not 60 FPS, or 30 for that matter. That shit looks like 12. 12 frames per second hell it could be like 10 frames a year i don't know why they 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 decided to let some far run like that it should be like matching the consistent frame rate as like the trainer or like the environment around them it looks choppy it feels like it's missing a few frames of running animation i don't know i i don't like how that's how they did that i'm assuming it's for hardware limitations but then again it's the fucking nintendo switch it's not the 3ds or ds or even older handhelds you could definitely increase the framing on that. Come on. This one I think is really cool. A, this is our first look of the beauty salon. It does have all of the... On the, on the left side. It does have all of these standard hairstyles that they have in like Sun and Moon and Sword and Shield. But unlike Sun and Moon where it's like certain hairstyles are exclusive to Sun. Certain hairstyles are exclusive to Moon. Here it's just like they, com they took Sword and Shield's advice and just combined all the hairstyles into one game. Or both versions actually like side note i really do like the texture on the uh on the hair it has like more you can tell like it has like more lines coming out of it to emulate like realistic hair you can just access this on the basic menu screen but you can now change the eye shape of your fucking trainers i think that's really good it adds a lot more uh a lot more layers customization to your character i really like that i don't know why they never done this before until now i think eyelashes you can select multiple eyelashes in Sword and Shield, but I think it was only limited to just three or four, if I can remember. Here it has like multiple options, which is again, adding more layer to customization. I like it. I also like the little icons on like the top. So you have like ones for eyes, lens, eyelashes, eyelashes with brushes, eyebrows, lips. I don't know what this eye symbol is supposed to be. It has a dot. I'm assuming it's to add like a freckle. And this, I think, okay, this one's probably like to add freckles. This one's probably to add moles. I really like how, okay, maybe not this guy. This guy's, this guy's fit looks trash in my opinion, but it does have like the UI stuff. So hide guide, filters, rotate camera, you know, all that stuff. I think it looks really cool. It's not like cluttered. It's not like spacious, like all over the fucking place. It's just right here when you need it. And you have like the camera settings for like, you know, taking a picture, rotating, 
I think this one is supposed to have the characters look at the camera. It's kind of similar to what Animal Crossing New Horizons did with their camera system, where if you like press the L button or right trigger button on the joy on the Joy Cons or Joy Controller, you can have the characters like look directly at the lens or at the camera. Uh, I think they're doing that here as well, which is really good. And I think this one is probably just to show uh, different emotions from the trainer. You know, that's that's really good. I like it. Okay, I think the last section here is like the raid battle stuff. Okay, we're almost done with the video. So they said that instead of like having your Pokemon be killed in like four turns and then the, the max raid dens will automatically reject you out of the cave. Here is like, it doesn't matter how many times your Pokemon dies. You just need to beat this thing in like a certain amount of time. So in this case, Chansey's three star, it has a Terra type of ghost. It only has like two minutes and 24 seconds to beat. They're using the, the 2D drawn sprites from BDSP. That's fine. Oh wait, this is like the choose. Which Pokemon should you attack with your move? That's really cool. I hope it's friendly fire because if it's not friendly fire, you could accidentally hit your own teammates Pokemon and fuck them over, which is not cool at all. So initially when I saw this in the in the older trailer back in August, the way that like all the Pokemon were fighting the raid Pokemon at the same time, it reminded me of like the active time battle system. From Final Fantasy, specifically ones from Final Fantasies 4 through 9. It did remind me of that because like all the Pokemon were attacking each other, well not each other, but they were all attacking the, the boss at once rather than taking turns one by one by one. It's, it's hard for me to describe it, but it definitely reminds me of that instead of just like one by one. This time around there's a remaining amount of cheers you can do, and unlike the ones in Sword and Shield where they just cheer, and just want you to encourage you stuff. This one right here actually gives you fucking benefits. So you have a goal out out, which I think raises special attack and physical attack. The shield goes for defense and special defense. And then heal up is briefly restoring your Pokemon's HP, which is really good. A little overpowered, but the fact that there's like a certain amount of times you can use it before uh, you can't use it anymore, it kind of balances it out a little bit more, which I really like. I really do appreciate that. Okay, so Fairy Graph, I'm gonna have a hard time pronouncing this new Pokemon's name. Fairy Graph using a, an attack kills it in the record time. It breaks and then all the trainers can use their Pokemon. I think it doesn't matter like who gets the last kill on the boss. It's just so long as you beat it, everybody can have a chance of getting it in their own like POVs, which I think is good. I'm not a huge, I'm not a huge fan of that ball flick. That ball flick right there, I'm not a huge fan of it. It's just one flick and then caught. At least with Sword and Shield, when you catch a Pokemon and the giant ball falls, and breaks the, the fucking concrete. At least it swirls a few times, which gives it a little bit more life and more believable animation. Whereas here, it's just like one flick. It's like a flick of the wrist, and you just instantly catch it. It feels like they could have just done the swirly thing from before. That worked fine. I don't know why they got they got rid of it. It would make sense if it was like a quick ball. Then like the one flick would be more justified. But this is a, I think this is a love ball instead, which you can't catch instantly. So, I don't know. I just thought that animation looked weird. It's a little bit of a nitpick, but I'm sure it doesn't like bother other people. I think we've reached the end of this analysis yeah that's pretty much it from here on out it's just like new like gameplay footage and stuff like that okay maybe the same but there are new footage you know like right here that's new this is new i really like it it's i know it's only for the trailer but it, it just looks really pretty it definitely gives Peldea a lot more believable uh sense of discovery and stuff like that and that's basically it for this video so overall <clears throat> My thoughts, I think this trailer is good. It definitely makes me more hyped than before, and I'm definitely looking forward to it. There are, like I said, there are a few like animation nitpicks on my end that I really didn't like personally. Like again, Sunfloor running at 12 frames per second and that ball at the end being one flick and that's it. I, I'm not a huge fan of that. Really, really not a huge fan of that. I, f I really want them to fix it, but I'm not hoping it. But other than that, Everything else was pretty good. The new features, the new UI, especially the UI. Holy shit, they, that UI is clean as fuck. Again, not as flashy as previous games, but I really love the UI that they uh, designed for this game. It looks really fresh, it looks clean, it looks organized. Maybe not for like the multiplayer stuff, or like the link battles and stuff like that. You know, I think that that space, I feel like they could have done more with it. It does serve its purpose. But for the most part, the UI is really good. New Pokemon reveal really like the design and the fact that it's normal and uh, psychic type makes it really good i really like this i really like this trailer it's well presented it's well executed it's well informed it has a bunch of information on there that people will definitely take a look at and have like 
much replay value to it by just going back and watching the video all over again like however many times that is i am way 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 more excited for scarlet and violet when it drops next month i believe so i'm definitely going to play that on stream whether it's like a normal playthrough or nuzlocke eh, i'll i'll decide on that later if you like this video make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel it helps me out a lot Turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on future videos. That's going to be it. So thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you have a fantastic day, afternoon, evening, night, wherever you live. And I will see you all in the next video. Until then, take care, everybody.